Welcome back, everyone. Next up, we have Todos Medical Limited. It trades on the OTCQB under the symbol TOMDF and engineers life-saving diagnostic solutions for the early detection of a variety of cancers. Please welcome its CEO, Gerald Comision. Welcome, Gerald. Thank you for having me, and thank you for everyone who's attending. Um, first, you know, we'd like to make sure that everyone understands, you know, TODOS's mission. We started out really as a developing diagnostic testing for cancer, um, realized uh, through that process that it was really a function of understanding the immune system and have since expanded uh, beyond cancer to also include COVID and Alzheimer's disease based on that understanding of the immune system. So, you know, we're, we're more than just a cancer immune testing company. And one of the things that we've done based upon our understanding of the immune system and the work we've done in COVID is actually build out an extremely exciting franchise uh, that looks at both immune support um, as well as pharmaceutical grade intervention uh, with some proprietary products that we have, uh, we have brought in through a joint venture. So, you know, this is a very exciting time for TOTOS and I want to make sure up front that we address really the major questions and the key areas of interest that we've seen from investors as a result of our foray into the therapeutic side of the COVID space. So uh, here's the safe harbor statement. Um, just you know, touching again on, on, on what we're doing. We, we have solutions that focus on therapeutics, on diagnostics, and on immune support. Um, we know now uh, you know, whereas several months ago there was a question as to whether or not COVID was gone in the United States, we understand that COVID is here to stay. And we also understand that while the vaccines provide tremendous base immune support and have done a very significant job in helping uh, improve the overall immunity of the population to help fight COVID, the reality is that vaccines alone were never going to be enough to solve the COVID crisis. And so we focused very early on at those underlying mechanisms that uh, were involved in COVID. And we think we've hit on uh, really the number one target for an antiviral for COVID. And we view this opportunity as effectively unlimited upside because, um, you know, while the vaccines help provide base support, breakthrough infections are going to happen. While they were kind of under the radar before, they've exploded and will continue to explode. And as we see waning immunity from the vaccines and, you know, boosters that will have differing effects in different people, you, know, you need to have a secondary complementary option, uh, which are the antivirals, so that if you do get sick, that you can take a pill that will help you get better and make sure that, you know, you stay out of harm's way. Um, and that, that is the real big opportunity that we're going to focus on initially. Um, beyond that, obviously, we have next generation cancer, Alzheimer's, and COVID detection technologies that are at various stages of development. Um, we have an immune diagnostics platform um, that could, you know, with a single blood test, be able to identify a number of different immune-related disorders, starting with cancer. Uh, and we spent a lot of time and a lot of money building up uh, our intellectual property portfolio around those novel technologies. Uh, beyond that, um, we have uh, initiated last year distributing uh, materials and supplies to labs because the supply chain for COVID testing were very challenged back then. Um, you know, in a lot of ways, uh, 2021 looks a lot like 2020. We're seeing that, you know, the supply chains are tightening up. Uh, the volumes for testing are way down from the, where they were last year, um, largely because uh, many of the labs that were involved in COVID testing in the third quarter moved away from COVID testing because the government effectively focused all of their resources on the vaccination campaign. And so testing became less of a priority. Uh, we obviously see that, that you know, that's trying to turn around right now and we're seeing challenges in that. And we think we can add a lot to that discussion, not only from supplying other labs, but now we have our own lab, which we'll talked about Provista Diagnostics, where we do COVID testing, and we also do uh, neutralizing antibody testing, as well as variant testing uh, in a way that's much faster than the way it's currently being done by genomic sequencing. And as a result of that, we think that you know we'll really be in a position 
uh, now to have, make a significant further impact on the COVID testing market. So, you know, getting started and focusing on where the greatest area of interest is, uh, this would be in the therapeutic area for Tolivir. So, you know, just a note, um, you know, we all know COVID is still lurking. Um, the U.S. national strategy really the, has relied upon the idea, the notion that you could achieve herd immunity. Herd immunity is basically the idea that, you know, so many people will have immunity to the virus that it'll make it, you know, impossible for the virus to find a new host or very unlikely. And to the extent that it's unlikely the virus can find a new host, then the virus will kind of die off uh, because it won't have anybody else to infect. What we're finding, um, and, and, you know, largely is in keeping with the history of other coronaviruses, is that that may actually be a fallacy, a fantasy, that we can reach herd immunity. Because uh, even people who do have some degree of immunity through the vaccines are getting reinfected in what they call breakthrough infections. So we're seeing that. Uh, we're seeing that especially with the new Delta variant. You know, we just redid this presentation from what we did from a presentation we gave at Emerging Growth in July. In July, we said, you know, the Delta variant accounted for 3% of cases. As of yesterday, the Delta variant is now accounting for 96% of cases. So in less than two months, a new variant has come on the scene, basically kicked out all the old variants and massively increased transmission throughout the U.S. So the idea and the notion that, you know, this is going to be a one-off, that, you know, we had the original strain, that went away. We had the alpha strain out of the U.K. And then, oh, you know, that's gone. So now, you know, effectively people thought that was gone at the end of the first quarter. In the second quarter, everyone was digging out of it. Lo and behold, we find, you know, every three months there's a new strain. Now it's the Delta. And we already know that the Lambda variant and a couple of other variants are starting to pick up in the U.S. And you know, while you know, it's, we don't know which one could emerge, we must prepare for the likelihood that there is going to be a variant that takes over from Delta that is either makes people sicker or is more transmissible. Um, and given that we know that there are obviously millions of Americans who are at high risk, who are over the age of 80, who have very difficult time uh, in mounting an antibody response, combined with a large population of people who are immunocompromised, who um, take immune suppressing drugs, and they also have a lower immune response. Therefore, you know, we must identify other solutions than just the vaccine. Um, and we're not alone in that thinking. You know, Pfizer, who is uh, probably the biggest beneficiary alongside Moderna in terms of the vaccination program that, you know, has gone on in the U.S. Um, and, you know, has administered hundreds of millions of doses, they're not sitting on their laurels because they understand that, you know, an oral antiviral pill that you can take when you get when you begin to get sick is really uh, a panacea. It's a game changer in terms of how we can manage this pandemic. So, um, you know, this slide is a little bit outdated. They are in they're still in phase one trials, but they've already started their phase two, three trials. And so, you know, as we look at the pipeline of what these antiviral treatments look like, um, we're still with, you know, a pretty limited scope of groups that are actually in the clinic with antiviral products. Um, so we've got Gilead. We know they have an EUA um, that, uh, you know, there's been questions about the efficacy of that product and which products you need to use in combination. Uh, Merck is in phase three now with uh, their mutagenesis product. Uh, that's an oral they tried it in hospitalized patients. It did not have a significant effect. So they, they discontinued uh, treatment in hospitalized patients and are now focusing on outpatients. Um, and we'll wait to see some data that looks like it may emerge in the fourth quarter. Pfizer is currently in a phase two, three with their oral um, antiviral, uh, which targets the same protease that we're going after. Um, we'll talk a little bit about um, why we think ours is better in just a moment. Uh, but, you know, on the on the right-hand side, we have our product, which, you know, is going after the 3CL protease, 
but also has a very complementary anti-cytokine activity, um, which means that it will not just work, we believe that it will not just work to limit the virus from replicating, but will also look to dampen down the immune, hyperimmune response that we see in COVID patients that triggers a cytokine storm. Um, so for our study, uh, we have we are using this oral antiviral in both hospitalized and non-hospitalized patients. We have an ongoing phase two trial in Israel in hospitalized patients, and we're preparing to initiate a phase two, three trial in India for hospitalized patients. Additionally, we're preparing to initiate a phase two, three trial in India for outpatients, for non-hospitalized patients. And we are also in the process of planning for our US IND, uh, which we will be filing uh, sometime late Q3, early Q4, and we expect to be able to start treating patients in the U.S. in the fourth quarter. So in terms of, you know, Tolivir, what does it do and how does it work? Um, we are targeting this 3CL protease. The 3CL protease really is going, is part of uh, the molecular machinery that allows a subcategory of coronaviruses called the nidovirus to replicate. So this includes SARS, it includes MERS, it includes COVID-19, and it includes a few other viruses. The key is that they're all trypsin-like cysteine proteases, and our inhibitor basically stops that from, uh, from being able to function. Uh, those uh, proteases, the 3CL protease, effectively allows the uh, virus, which has made copies of itself, it cuts that virus and it allows that copy to be released. And then it facilitates the virus exiting the cell and then entering other cells. You actually need, each viral particle needs 60 3CL protease particles to create one viral particle. And so, you know, it's very fundamental to the machinery. Um, the, the, our ability to inhibit that protease is quite robust and we will be sharing data on that in the near future. And I'll go over exactly when and why, uh, data, you know, concrete data in terms of, uh, graphs and charts and other, you know, key data points have been delayed and they'll be out in the third quarter. Uh, the other mechanism that's very complementary and was becoming increasingly important, especially for patients who are symptomatic, is the anti-cytokine activity um, that really helps, uh, you know, on the symptomatic side. So, you know, when you get a lot of virus in your system, that's one activity, but really the symptoms don't come from virus. They come from the virus triggering a, a cytokine storm, and that is the anti-cytokine activity that we're looking to also target with our uh, Tolivir product. So uh, we believe that based upon this, you know, we, we have what could be a really unique and highly, highly uh, effective therapy for COVID-19. Um, this is being developed through a joint venture with NLC Pharma, and I'll talk a little bit more about that shortly. Um, in terms of, you know, Tolivir and what our strategy is, Obviously, we need to obtain defensible and differentiating claims as an oral treatment for patients with COVID-19, right? Um, so uh, why does a little company like Todos Medical have the potential to actually compete with some of the larger players? Uh, the reason is because uh, our partners who were at this, very similar to uh, BioNTech, which were Pfizer's partners on the vaccine, our partners, NLC Pharma, have been working on this 3CL protease for over two decades. Um, the work started with uh, SARS, uh, actually started before SARS with the uh, common cold virus in H229. It kicked into gear with SARS. Over $18 million was raised and invested to identify the right compound, understand the selectivity of the compound and the safety and then to conduct uh, human studies to confirm the safety of the compound at varying dosing regimens. Uh, and now, uh, unfortunately or fortunately, those other you know, potential pandemics were limited, whereas this one you know, got out into the public. And so now there's enough runway for this product to really 
uh, go through the clinical development stage and actually reach a commercial setting. So um, what work has been done to date uh, beyond you know, all the previous work for the other uh, potential pandemics? Well, in 2020, NLC Pharma conducted a phase one, two study that was observational um, for which we have the data and we will be releasing that data later this quarter. Um, they requested that we not actually put out this data pending some milestones, which I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, and that is the reason why the data has not yet been out. Um, what I can say is that there were very favorable outcomes that, that you know, caused TOTOS to take the plunge to drive the programs forward for the ingredients underlying this product and uh, fund the current phase two trial in India, in Israel, sorry, and now, um, as you know, the profile is increasing, and the the the, the importance of this uh, potential compound is increasing. We are looking uh, and have now in place the strategy to bring forward the global phase two three clinical trials that will start in India and that we expect to expand expand globally. So, what do I mean by that? So, we currently have a joint venture with NLC Pharma. Um, where they own the intellectual property and the intellectual property was licensed to the joint venture. Um, we, are, we are now uh, basically going to restructure that and we are going to buy NLC Pharma into the subsidiary, uh, the, the uh, entity uh, for which the name will be disclosed very shortly will be 60% owned by Todos, 40% owned by NLC, and it will own all of the intellectual property not only the rights, uh, you know, to the IP around the Tolavir product and the Tolavid product that uh, I'll talk about in a moment, but uh, there have been several discoveries that have been made very recently based upon uh, the funding that we've put in place and the work that we've been doing with NLC that can really drive the next generation of 3CL protease inhibitors. So what do I mean by that? The actual natural compound that inhibits the 3CL protease is not known. The receptor was published, but the actual chemical you know, compound that affixes to that receptor, the natural one is not known. Um, we have made significant progress in identifying that. And what that will allow us to do, obviously, is to you know, take a dual track, which will be one, we'll be able to create an extracted version from the, uh, the plants that make up our Tolavid and Tolavir product. So we'll be able to create an extracted, more concentrated version um, over time as a next-gen, second-generation product that will still be a natural product. And then ultimately, we'll be able to do medicinal chemistry using the natural ligand as the backbone to create a chemical compound that will, you know, for heretofore be um, one of the key, you know, products that will be used to treat the needle virus subcategory of coronaviruses. Um, and so, you know, as I know we've had some shareholders have been very frustrated with regards to the timing of release of data and what the plans are with regards to this program, those are the plans. So we've signed a letter of intent with NLC Pharma and we are going through the process now of completing that transaction to form that new entity that will be 60% owned by Totos, 40% owned by NLC, and that will raise money privately, uh, we expect, at much higher valuations in order to take this forward, and there will be uh, new management that will be laser-focused on the pharmaceutical side to take that forward. Um, secondarily, we have also signed a letter of intent with a uh, pending uh, European distribution partner uh, to distribute uh, our dietary supplement product, Tolavid, which I'll talk about in a moment, uh, in Europe. Uh, and they have committed a million dollars to fund the initial part of the clinical studies in India to get to the interim data point that will allow us to flip this, the proposed phase two, three trial from a phase two into a phase three. So we've been working diligently on putting those pieces together so that at the end of it, uh, TOTOS will be the public entity uh, through which any public investors who want to have exposure to this you know, potentially massive opportunity um, will have to go through, and that will be majority owned by TOTOS. Moving on to the second part of that 
uh, subsidiary, um, which is our dietary supplement product. And I'll just touch on this. So the same ingredients that we use in the Tolavir product that's currently in clinical trials, um, we developed a separate and distinct product called Tolavid. Uh, that is a dietary supplement that does not have any treatment claims related to diagnosing, treating, or preventing any diseases, including COVID-19. But we were able to obtain uh, claims from the FDA related to uh, supporting healthy immune function. Um, and very recently, uh, we provided sufficient data to get a claim that, we, that our products are 3CL protease inhibitors. And we think that over time, as people begin to understand the importance of the 3CL protease in treating COVID, that, um, you know, they will come to understand that there is benefit from an immune support uh, product that, you know, can help support their immune system, you know, during this period. Um, so, you know, we have uh, the Tolavid product, which, you know, what we like to call high concentration that is available for sale in the U.S. at mytolavid.com. We received a certificate of free sale for a five-day dosing regimen at 12 pills per day. Um, you know, obviously, people can up that dose uh, if they wish. Um, and, you know, depending on how your body's reacting, you can obviously, you know, use as much as you need. Uh, to support your immune system through challenging times. And uh, really, this is the only known commercial product that actually inhibits the 3CL protease. Um, so that can be bought at mytolavid.com. We're working, currently working on getting that into Al Amazon and Alibaba. And uh, it's currently on sale for MSRP of $135. That price will be going up to $199. And the reason for that is because we are bringing the second product online which is uh, Tolavid um, daily. And the Tolavid daily product is a less concentrated version of the Tolavid product that's received the same uh, 3CL protease inhibitor claim from the FDA. And the idea is that helps with daily immune support. Uh, we're also, that will also soon be available on mytolavid.com. And we are working uh, on Amazon and Alabama sales channels for that as well with the target being a subscription model so that we can get, you know, people to be uh, receiving this product on a monthly basis. That product will be priced at $99 uh, per bottle for 60 pills. And so that product is what we intend to really go mass market on a, on a, uh, you know, overall dietary supplement immune support basis. So those, you know, those are the products and those are our three CL protease inhibitor programs. Um, we will, on the therapeutic side, uh, obviously we need to touch base with regards to our, our uh, diagnostics platform. Uh, we have the Vedessa breast cancer test. Um, that is really the, the centerpiece of our diagnostic strategy now. That is a commercial stage test uh, insofar as it's previously been commercialized and we're working to bring that assay back into the marketplace within the next six months. Uh, it's got significant peer-reviewed data uh, with over 1,300 patients prospectively gathered that demonstrates that um, it, you know, very significantly can reduce the potential number of uh, mammograms, uh, sorry, the potential number of biopsies that can be seen uh, as a result of inconclusive mammogram, um, which are BIRADS 3, BIRADS 4, which affects approximately 40% of the population. So um, in terms of the data, um, we've got, you know, very good uh, negative predictive value for the breast cancer test, as well as very good sensitivity. And over $50 million was invested in Videsa in order to bring it uh, forward into the market as a uh, laboratory developed test. Unfortunately, the previous company that owned it was unable to get a CPT code. Uh, and that's the reason uh, they, they couldn't continue to take it forward. They had too many losses uh, from accounts receivable that were never paid. We're taking a different tact where we're going to be laser focused on making sure that the uh, reimbursement is there and that we do the necessary groundwork to be able to get paid uh, when we bring that to the market. And obviously, we worked closely uh, with, you know, this tremendous group of uh, academic collaborators to generate this data. And so we're highly confident in the clinical utility of this Videsa test. Uh, secondarily, 
Uh, we have a diagnostic test for Alzheimer's disease that is also currently under clinical trials. Um, we, um, we were able to generate data that showed an extremely high correlation with amyloid beta concentrations uh, for the Limpro versus amyloid PET. We think this is critically important in the new era of uh, this Aduhelm drug for Alzheimer's disease and new amyloid drugs for Alzheimer's disease because payers are looking for ways to screen and rule out patients that are inappropriate for uh, therapy with an amyloid therapy. And one of the best ways to do that is to have a blood test that can rule out uh, subjects so that you have an enriched population that would go into uh, therapy. Uh, first would go to uh, imaging, uh, PET imaging for amyloid, um, which is very expensive. So having a test that's uh, much cheaper uh, screen and then confirm with the amyloid test, that's initially the way that we think it's going to go very similar to the mammogram story. And then ultimately, once we get enough data, we think Limpro could potentially uh, have an impact on replacing the uh, PET imaging. Um, so, you know, there, uh, that is being positioned not only as an investigational use only, but there's now a commercial activity for this. And beyond that, you know, we have our screening platform, uh, which, you know, we won't spend much time on, but just to say this, we believe that this screening platform, our TBIA platform, could be a major competitor for Grail's technology in the future once we build up enough of our data set. It's based on an AI strategy, um, and because it's AI-driven, really it's about gathering more samples, and we intend to do that um, using the one-for-one uh, -one samples that we uh, will be gathering with Videsa. So we're very excited about that opportunity. And then lastly, which I won't touch on too much, uh, but is critically important, is our revenue engine, which is our Provista Diagnostics Lab and our Corona Diagnostics Distribution Arm. Um, we recently acquired Pro uh, Provista Diagnostics in April. We completed all the payments for it in July. Uh, we're currently doing PCR testing out of that lab, and we've spent the last several months um, validating and optimizing uh, variant testing, which we can do uh, through a specialized PCR test, as well as uh, neutralizing antibody testing, which is becoming increasingly important with this whole booster shot discussion. So um, because of that, um, we are now building up the sales force uh, for uh, our CLIA lab and we built up automation where we can do 20,000 uh, PCR tests a day. Um, we'll be able to do several thousand neutralizing antibody tests a day. Um, currently, uh, PCR tests are paid, reimbursed at $100 a test. So if we meet match capacity, you know, that is $2 million in revenue a day. And so while we've you know, seen a drop off in the distribution business that is now beginning to ramp up again uh, from several of our clients, we're also preparing for our own lab that can do significant volume where we get much higher margins. Um, so just a little bit about the team. Uh, the key people, obviously, is Dr. Jorge Leon, who was previously a very senior executive at Quest Diagnostics. He's leading the charge in terms of planning the launch of the Videsa test and also supporting our scientific efforts on uh, the diagnostic side with our 3CL protease test, which I didn't have an opportunity to talk about, which is our TOLA test, so that we have a, a diagnostic drug combination with Tolavir. Um, so in summary, uh, we have proprietary technology platforms. We have scalable and replicable models with our diagnostics. We have several partnerships and additional partnerships that we have in place. We have revenue, and we see potential very significant near-term revenue coming out of Provista. And ultimately, we're going after you know, diagnostics immune monitoring and therapies market that is over 400 billion. And so there's a significant marketplace for our products and services. So I'd like to thank you uh, for listening to this presentation and I open the floor up to questions. Thank you, Gerald. We just have a few minutes, um, but we do have lots of questions for you. Um, a question from Clint Stenko. So Todos has a diagnostics business and a pharmaceutical business. What is the focus of the company or is it both? Um, so, you know, we've obviously been stretched quite thin because we have been focusing on both. However, on a go forward basis, the parent company is going to be focusing on, on the diagnostics where we have revenue, we see growing revenue, and we have proprietary technologies that can be distributed through that diagnostic sales channel. And we're forming a subsidiary joint venture 
with uh, NLC Pharma, who is our partner on the Tolavir and Tolavid, and that private entity that will be majority owned by Todos will be taking the pharmaceutical and dietary supplement uh, opportunities forward. And we are re actively recruiting new management with very you know seasoned resumes to be able to take this and give the marketplace a high degree of confidence that we can take uh, those products across the finish line. Well, Gerald, it is uh, time to wrap this up, but we have lots of questions for you. We'll send them directly to you so you can answer on your own time. But thank you so much for joining us on our conference again, and we look forward to your future updates. Thank you very much. All right, everyone, stay with us. We're going to come right back with our next presenter.